On September 20th of 2019, two games came out for the Nintendo Switch. The first one was published by Nintendo, featured one of the most iconic gaming figures of all time as the protagonist, was remastering and reimagining a beloved title from a past console, and really had all the makings of a massive hit. The second was a ridiculous four-hour game about a goose. Just days after the release of these two games, the Nintendo eShop showed something completely unprecedented. The game topping the charts was Untitled Goose Game, while Link's Awakening sat sorely in second place. So what the hell happened? The Untitled Goose Game actually began as a joke back in 2016. Developer Michael McMaster tweeted a Slack conversation between him and his colleagues, talking baselessly about geese and how they should make a game about it. The tweet got a bit of traction, and they realized that perhaps this could turn into something. The studio, consisting of just four developers in Melbourne, Australia, an area that doesn't even have geese natively, decided then and there to make this game a reality. But a mildly popular tweet doesn't explain the bizarre success of the Goose game. To see why exactly, we're gonna have to dig a little bit deeper. Now the first point I want to address is the accessibility of the game. The game is extremely intuitive, and the controls are easy to pick up for even the most casual of players. But I don't just mean mean how easy it is to play. The accessibility of the goose game is multifaceted. The premise of the game is universally appealing. Everyone who's ever run into a goose knows that they're kind of assholes, and everyone who sees the game can understand the hilarity of taking on that persona. It's one of the purest forms of gaming fun. I mean, who has played Skyrim and hasn't at least once gone on a absolutely menacing killing spree in Whiterun right after they save? Sometimes when you're playing a game, it's fun to remember that you can just go and mess around with the poor, underpowered, underwhelming NPCs. I mean, they're just uh, robots in a sense. They don't really have a heart or soul and they're definitely not going to rise up against us in like three to five years. The Goose Game has other forms of accessibility as well. It's casual so you can pick it up and play it for short sessions. Time is a barrier for nobody in this game. It's also not too long. You don't have to sink 100 hours into this game to get the satisfaction of beating it. On top of that, it's also super cheap, going for just $15 or $20 depending on when you get it. Now, yes, this does mean that you're not getting a full narrative progression with character arcs and plot twists, but that's not what this game is about. It's a bite-sized game with pure, simple gameplay that works extremely well all wrapped up into a neat package with satisfying aesthetics and a genius soundtrack. The Goose Game, surprisingly, appeals to more people than most games do nowadays. Now the second thing that I want to address is the creativity of the game. The closest game I'd probably compare it to is probably Hitman, but you don't have to be a genius to see the difference between Hitman and the Untitled Goose Game. Untitled Goose Game is a game that you're going to purchase just to see what it's like. You know you're probably going to have an experience unlike anything you've ever had before in games. And again, this ties into the cost benefit from before. It's not like you have to shell out 60 bucks to have this once in a lifetime experience, and it's not like you're going to have to dedicate weeks of your life into grinding through the story. It's a succinct way to convey the concept. And while those other two points I just talked about are completely valid, they would be nothing without this third one. The Goose Game got what every developer dreams of getting, the approval of the internet. Games live and die by online opinion, and indie devs do have a leg up in this regard. Due to the manpower and budget restraints of indie developers relative to big publishers, the internet has a soft spot to them. Think about it, if EA had published this game and posted it to the front page of Reddit, it would have gotten zero traction, it would have been dead on arrival. But House House had a much easier time. Yes, it started with a tweet, and that got traction, but then it became a concept video that got posted to YouTube. It rose to the number one spot on Reddit a few times, which translates into an insane amount of free marketing. The game's concept is easy to convey, and as I've mentioned, it's accessible and relatable. All they need is a few seconds of your time, and they can instantly show you their vision and get you on board. It's funny, so it's easily upvoted. And above all, they have a wonderfully innocent backstory. They wanted to make a hilarious game about a goose as a joke, so they did, and it turned out beautifully. All in all, the developers at House House had a winning recipe, and frankly, I'm glad they did. Indie developers shouldn't have to check all these boxes to find success, but House House did it beautifully. Whether or not it was intentional is ambiguous, but I hope their success paves the way for more indie studios to follow in their footsteps. Indie games are the most influential in progressing the gaming industry, as they don't have corporate watchdogs telling them what they can and can't do. No one at Activision, EA, or even Epic Games would have had the freedom to make such a silly game, but House House could. And while Untitled Goose Game might not be the industry-shaking game we so desperately needed, they certainly are an anomaly when it comes to finding success in such a controlled and competitive industry. Link's Awakening should have been the number one game on the eShop. Any expert in the industry would have told you that it would have topped the charts, it had everything going for it, and nobody would have ever guessed that a game about a goose would have stolen the top spot. But against all odds, it did. And that is the story about how a nonsensical game about a goose 
broke the gaming industry. Massive thanks to my patrons RS, Ethan, Gamer of Gold, Felix, Admiral of Gem, and Nicholas for making this video possible. And thanks to each and every one of you for watching. Until next time, this has been Meraki. Bye-bye.